What's up everyone, Blake here. Today I'm gonna to be taking you through a tour of my new intermediate Nepenthes grow tent. This one is quite a bit larger than my previous one. I'll be walking you through the construction and setup and everything that I've got going on in here. So um, one of the reasons why I decided to kind of build my own tent was to get um, some specific dimensions on this tent to really take advantage of the layout of this room. So the the tent itself is six feet by six and a half feet and seven feet tall. So I wanted those specific dimensions in here, um, particularly the height. I wanted seven feet to give some room for Nepenthes to vine and flower and all that. Um, and also going the DIY route is a decent amount cheaper uh, for a tent, especially a tent this size. So um, all in all, I'd say it's probably about 50% cheaper to go the DIY route. In terms of the construction of this tent, I used half inch PVC pipes like I did in my previous uh, tent for the frame. I also repurposed these snap clamps from my old tent to kind of hold the plastic sheeting on here that I have to the frame. Um, the plastic sheeting uh, helps kind of keep everything nice and rigid and give some good structure to the tent. So I went with a 3.5 mil poly sheeting for the tent walls here. Previously I used shower curtains, but obviously with seven, uh, or just with the dimensions in general that I'm working with here, that wouldn't work. So it's super nice. The 3.5 mil poly sheeting comes on these uh, 25 foot rolls from Home Depot. So I just went out and bought some of those cut them to size and um, fitted it to the tent frame. Um, I also have, you might notice, I added a zipper to the outside here. So this is just a nice peel and stick zipper from AC Infinity, seven feet tall. Um, just happened to be the exact size that I needed here. Super easy to apply, just peel off the adhesive backing, stick it to the plastic, let it sit for a day, and then unzip it and cut it open. and. Now I've got a nice zipper opening to the outside of my tent. Reason I did that was before I was just coming over to the corner here and I'd undo this clamp and open up the plastic sheeting to get in, but you can kind of see that the clamp was kind of um, eating away at the plastic here each time I'd open it and close it. So I wanted a kind of a more permanent solution there. So let's go ahead and open this up and take a look inside. <clears throat> All right. So also on the walls here, you'll notice I have some reflective material. Um, I have this reflective material on anywhere that I have lighting hooked up. So obviously the walls themselves are this clear plastic. So in order to get a little bit more reflection like you would get in a typical grow tent, I added this... Um, reflective bubble insulation and I just got this at my local hardware store luckily it already came in four foot rolls so it was perfect I just bought one um, one four foot wide roll and was able to do this this area as well as my two racks over here um, in terms of temperature and humidity in here so during the summer months, I'll actually put a window mount AC unit in the window here, and that is set to keep it between or around 80 degrees during the day, and it'll drop down to 64 degrees at night. These lights actually put out a fair amount of heat, so um, I don't really worry about things getting too cool in here during the days, honestly. Um, you know, with the heat coming off of these lights, it's more of a cooling thing that needs to happen during the day, so... Um, but now we're in November, so it's quite a bit cooler outside and I have the window AC removed and I just have the window cracked during the day. Um, I just open it and close it or adjust that, that width that it's cracked depending on how cold it is outside. Um, and that'll allow cold air to come in here during the day, keep things nice and cool. And then once these lights shut off at night, then the temperature will drop down, um, pretty nice. So during the day in the winter months, I'd say it's about 
70, 75 degrees in this tent during the day and then dropping down into the 50s at night. So um, getting definitely more highland conditions in here during the winter months and then during the summer months it's kind of uh, the cool side of intermediate in here. Um, in terms of humidity, I actually just upgraded my previous, uh, from my previous humidifier, I have this uh, brand new hydro fogger. Uh, this is the mini fogger and it's actually going to turn on right now. It's a little loud, but I'll, I'll see if I can kind of speak here so you can hear me. It's hooked up to this uh, Inkbird humidity controller. So it's set to, the set value is 77.5% relative humidity. Right now it's dropped down to 72. So it's set to turn on when it drops down 5% and really um, it'll turn off once it gets above 77% uh, humidity. So all in all, it keeps it around on average, I'd say about 75% relative humidity in the tent. And you can see it just pumps out humid air within you know, 30 seconds, this whole tent is just filled with humid air. So I'm really, really enjoying this. I've actually got this hooked up to a water container outside. So there is a 20 gallon trash can that uh, feeds water into the hydro fogger. So it's, the trash can is elevated a little bit. So anytime that uh, the humidifier turns on, water just comes in through a line that I have connected there. Um, and the reason I have it hooked up to that trash can is because I'm using reverse osmosis water, um, just because I wanna keep everything nice and, and pure and clean in here when it comes to water in the tent. Um, one more thing on the construction that I wanted to mention too is the flooring. So previously I had a dog crate pan in here for my flooring, but obviously with the size of this tent that wouldn't be practical nor possible. So I went ahead, went out to my hardware store and bought this heavy duty pond liner. This is super thick, um, plastic material and I've got it actually clipped to the frame and kind of um, hanging over the edge of the frame so that it creates a little bit of a well in here. So if water were to spill and fill the floor of the tent, you know, I've got a good third of an inch to half an inch of room here where water can kind of pool and accumulate without actually spilling over out of the tent onto the floor. So being that I have wood floors in this room, I really wanted to make sure that I was taking some extra steps to protect those. A um, couple more things. Let's see here. So I, I do have some fans kind of scattered throughout my tent. I have one here on the floor, kind of point, pointed away from this corner. I have a couple of AC Infinity um, USB fans mounted on some of the more narrow racks to just kind of keep air circulating throughout those more narrow spaces. And then on the opposite end of the tent here, I have this um, clip-on rack mount fan here. So the idea is just to kind of keep air circulating um, throughout the tent so that um, there's not a huge temperature difference between the top of the tent and the bottom of the tent. And the humid air also gets circulated around so everyone is nice and happy. Um, in terms of, let's see, the lighting here. So I have uh, three of these FloorWave P80s from Car uh, Drew at Carnivoro. So there's one here, one over here, and one over here. These lights, they seem to need a, a decent amount of hanging space to kind of get the best light levels for Nepenthes without burning them. So I have these three floor waves on the racks and spaces where I have uh, taller, more mature Nepenthes. Um, the the intensity of the floor wave lights I feel is perfect for Nepenthes. I feel like when you're growing Nepenthes in a grow tent situation, a lot of the lights you come across, they're either going to be way too strong for Nepenthes or not strong enough. There's not a lot kind of in the middle space here, especially when uh, you're growing like me where you have a couple of racks 
uh, for Nepenthes. So the floral waves, I feel like, are the, the perfect kind of intensity and spectrum for growing Nepenthes. And then on my other rack here where I have some of my smaller Nepenthes, I actually have these uh, Barina T5 LED tubes. These are four foot wide tubes. I have four per shelf and I have three shelves. So there are six LED tubes in total, or sorry, 12 LED total tubes in total. The nice thing about the Barina T5s is they can be plugged up in series with each other. You can plug together six of them at most in series. So I have two sets of six plugged together here, um, lighting up these shelves for the smaller Nepenthes. The thing with the Barinas though is you can see the, the distance from the lights to the top of the plants is much, much smaller than over here with the floor waves. And that's because these lights just aren't very bright. Hence why I have four tubes on, on each shelf. And so you can see even at this lighting distance, there is not really any leaf burn going on or any discoloration. So the, it could probably be even closer. Um, the thing with the Barinas is you know, since they're not super bright, they have to be much closer. And so you can't really stick a tall, mature, and or vining Nepenthes under here. So these are really just for my smaller plants. Um, I have a couple plants that are kind of outgrowing the space here. You can see some down here. Um, those will eventually have to get moved out. But for the time being, this is kind of where they're at. Um, in terms of the, the racks themselves, these are just four foot wide by 18 inch deep, uh, wire metal shelving units from, um, you know, you can get these anywhere. So I've got two of these. And then I also have, um, the space over here without a rack, just to kind of give some more vertical space for Nepenthes that will eventually grow up and vine. You'll also notice on each of the areas where I'm growing Nepenthes, I have these four foot wide heavy duty trays. So these are trays that I have converted into self watering um, trays for Nepenthes. I actually have a, a video on my channel walking you through the construction and kind of going into a bit more detail on these. But essentially each tray is filled with about four or five gallons of reverse osmosis water and then there's um, these platforms in here. Let's see if you can get a good look at that. These platforms in here, um, the mat sits on top of the platform and the edges of the mat are kind of uh, dipped down into the water on both sides. And so you can see how moist this thing is. This keeps the mat nice and wet without having the plants actually sitting in water. And then what happens is, uh, and this is why I have most of my plants in net pots, the, the mats wick water into the substrate of the plants. So the plants stay consistently evenly moist, kind of like the, the dampness of a well wrung out sponge without being sopping wet. Um, and so it's been working out great for Nepenthes. I have one, two, three, four and now five of these trays it's super helpful for especially if you ever go on a trip or a vacation or if you're just uh, lazy like me and don't like coming in and watering every few days um, the fact that these are self-watering and that each tray holds several gallons of water these can go um, two to three weeks i'd say on average about two and a half weeks um, between uh, when I need to fill up the trays. So very convenient, especially if you are a lazy grower like me. So um, I've got a more in-depth video uh, doing a time-lapse of the construction on my Instagram. Uh, go check that out at pings and things, same as my YouTube channel here, pings underscore n underscore things. And also uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I've got a ton of other videos out here. Um, also just posted a video tour of all of the Nepenthes in this collection. So if you're curious on 
who all is growing in here, go out and uh, check that out. So thanks for watching.